What's up guys, how you all doing? So it's uh, Sunday evening, I had quite an eventful day today, uh, went to uh, Blue Water for breakfast and had McDonald's, went to Blue Water for lunch uh, and had lunch, uh, it was with uh, Jade and Brooke, and uh, then what did we do, uh, this afternoon uh, Jody uh, came round as well from uh, you know the AJ show Jody. Uh, caught up with her for a little while and then uh, been pretty much just working. I've got so much to get done for tomorrow um, that it's not even funny really. But um, I've just uh, been kind of uh, thinking about my new Mac Pro and so many of you keep saying to me, are you going to get the Mac Pro? Uh, what specs are you going to get? Blah, 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 all the usual kind of questions. So I think in yesterday's when I told you I was reinstalling Mavericks, which I've literally just finished uh, like today, kind of got it almost where I want it. Um, what you know, I said I'm going to make a whole video on it. So, this is not going to be the whole video, but I'm going to bring you guys, uh, you, you vlog uh, guys, uh, a little bit of an insight before I kind of make the main video on it in, in a couple of weeks. So, we saw we've got the base model, which was two thousand four hundred ninety-nine pounds. Um, we've also got the one up from that, which I think was three thousand two hundred ninety-nine pounds, and then obviously you've got the dollar equivalent of that. Uh, if you want to look it up, just go to apple.com uh, and have a look on their store price. So those are the two prices. Now the baseline model for me, I I don't think I'm going to want that because uh, the SSD is only 256 gig. I'm going to need more than that. Uh, there wasn't enough RAM and I wanted the better graphics cards as well. So the difficult problem is, is that they haven't got the configurator online yet. So I don't actually know how much adding a one terabyte drive would be. Uh, I don't know how much 64 gig of RAM would be. Um, I don't know any of these things. So it's difficult to say. Now, I've allocated a certain amount of money to it. Um, probably somewhere in the region of maybe about eight grand, something like that. Um, but I'm not too sure yet. It really depends. You know, there's going to be certain things that I won't be willing to pay for. So even though I have allocated a certain amount of money for it, it may not necessarily work out that way. I'm not sure yet. But the spec that I actually... Um, was looking at was the 12 core one. Now the issue with the 12 core is that the clock speed is significantly lower, almost a whole um, thousand megahertz, a whole gigahertz slower. So I think the quad core was like 3.5 gigahertz, and the 12 core was like 2.5 gigahertz. Now when you're using multi-threaded apps like a, a Final Cut and stuff like that, that is absolutely fine. You know, it, it doesn't matter about the clock speed being lower because there's 12 of them doing the same job, so it flies. But it's quite a few apps that you use kind of day to day that, that don't really work on a on a multi-threaded basis or you know a kind of multi don't utilize multi-core processors. So that lower clock speed, being that it's a whole gigahertz slower, could potentially affect that kind of sort of day-to-day -day performance, you know, your general sort of you know, every sort of day performance. So I've got to kind of think about that. Um, and then I thought maybe I'll come somewhere in the middle and go for like the six core or the eight core or something like that. Because they were sort of they sort of sat squarely in the middle. Um, and then because I've got like the MacBook Pro, the Retina MacBook Pro, what I quite often do uh, with uh, Final Cut Pro, I actually send it off to Compressor and then I have a clustered system in Compressor that utilizes both of my computers to render uh, the video so it does it twice as fast. So if I got a lower uh, number of cores but with the higher clock speed, I can still utilize my Retina MacBook Pro for rendering when I want to do a large render to do it faster. Um, but I still have the kind of faster sort of everyday clock speed. I hope that you guys are kind of keeping up with what I'm saying here. So there's that situation. Um, there's also the fact that I don't know how much these processor configurations are going to cost. Now, you know, if the if the six core one you add, I don't know, a thousand pounds, and the t the eight core fifteen hundred pounds, but then the twelve core you add five thousand or something like that, then I'm obviously not going to do that. Um, but if it kind of goes up fairly equally, then again, I'm going to have to kind of look at this all again when the prices come in. These are just my sort of thoughts that I'm thinking about at the moment. Then we move on to the graphics side of things. Now, the mid, uh, the higher range one, the 3299 one, um, had the two, I think they call them D500s, which was the mid-level one with about three gigabytes of RAM each. Now, I'm kind of hoping to get the D700s with three gig of RAM each, but I don't know because the D700s might only come in the six gig offering. I'm not again because the configurator is not up. I don't really know, so that's what I'm kind of thinking about on that. Ideally, I want the D700 with three gig, uh, but two of them obviously because you get to, you get dual graphics cards. Um, 
in terms of storage, I've got to have a bare minimum of 512 on the, on the native root drive, so I'm, I'm going to get, be getting 512 either way. If the one terabyte option is not ridiculous, which I think it will be, then um, I will go for the one terabyte, but I think it will be ridiculous. So I'm probably going to end up with half a terabyte. Uh, and then the other situation is the memory. Now, the memory is definitely user replaceable. So probably what I will do is just get whatever memory comes with it, and then I'll buy a aftermarket memory from uh, Crucial or someone like that um, and chuck that in afterwards because that will obviously work out probably a fair bit cheaper. And uh, I'm gonna, I want 64 gig of RAM in it. Without doubt, I want 64 gig of RAM. Um, I've got a couple of Java apps that I use for certain uh, business stuff, uh, and they they used uh, uses 12 gig of RAM for one instance, and sometimes I run two. So 64 gig is definitely going to be the way to go. But like I say, I'll probably buy that aftermarket. Um, so and then we've got the fact that I'm going to connect them up to all my displays. Now initially, I'm going to have the setup that I've got with the three uh, cinema displays and the three. Uh, Dell displays at the top but there's a possibility that I might change that to uh, add three Thunderbolt displays um, and change the Dell ones uh, I might not I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to do with that yet those top three monitors are really for, for monitoring so it's not so important about the resolution and the quality of image on those ones although it would be nice to have uh, six the same but then I don't want to do that because I might potentially move to 4k monitors but that's a whole another video uh, and I think I've already waffled on for six minutes and 39 seconds so yeah sorry guys to kind of waffle on but loads of you have asked me the question I am going to do a proper video on this on the main channel but I thought I'd just give you guys a little bit of an insight beforehand uh, as my kind of most loyal uh, viewers and followers so yeah that's it guys let me know what your thoughts uh, and opinions are down below providing they are happy ones and not silly abusive ones would you need that for blah 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 all that bullshit but uh, yeah that's it guys hope you've all had an absolutely fantastic weekend and i will see you all in the next one peace